My brother and sister, we are gathered here today to celebrate the life of Brother Gene Roy Hodges. And at this time, the family has outlined the order of service for us to preside by, and we will outline, we will follow the order of service as outlined. First is call for a hymn, follow with a prayer. Then we will have the scripture reading. After the scripture reading, we have reflection open to family and friend. And please remember that the family request in two minutes. And then we'll have a eulogy by Pastor James Lawrence. At this time, we will begin with the program as outlined. I will begin with the hymn followed with the prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. What a privilege to carry everything to God. peace we often forfeit oh what needless pain we bear oh what peace we on the forfeit oh what needless pain We do not carry everything to God in prayer. All the call we do not carry everything to God. Our Father, God of heaven and earth, the creator and maker of all things, the light of nature, we come this afternoon because death is not our friend. Father God, because this flesh cannot inherit the heavenly places, Mortality cannot inherit immortality. So we are assembled here this afternoon to place the body of our beloved brother, Gene Roy Hodges, from the dust that he became, the dust he will return. Father God, you have taken his soul, his spirit to you. And we thank you, Lord, that he knew you and loved you and gave his life to you at a young age. And he stood fast. You knew him and he knew you. Father God, you gave your all and all when you gave your son that we might be saved. And Father God, we thank you for the gift. And we thank you for the opportunity to come this evening to celebrate the life of this man. And Father God, we lift up this family. The wife, the mother, the children, the grandchildren, the nieces, nephews, all the family members. Father God, and we pray that they will follow the example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and Brother Gene Hodge to give their lives to you. Yes. Father God, if they've not done so. So, Father God, we give you praise, honor, and glory. Yes. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In the name of Jesus, Jesus. we give you praise, honor, and glory. Amen and amen. amen. Chapter 9 to the 11th verse. 
As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to yield the floor for reflection. Anyone want to come and reflect on the life of Brother James Rogers? You may come at this time. Good evening. And God said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I know, where I go, you know, and the way you know. Jean knew the way. <sighs> Two minutes go so fast, but I can't, I have to say what I have to say. Jean, known as hard time, somebody else calling mullet. <laughs> you know, <laughs> was my church brother, but he was my brother. He was the most wonderful brother mm. I could have. And he was a friend, a true, true friend. I cannot stand and tell you the, the wonderful things he's done, how he's helped people. He would, with the term, give someone the shirt off my back. He put a new spin on it, cause he would. He would give, and if he didn't have one to give you, go buy you one, if he didn't have it. I love Gene. Gene and I was so tight, he would pick me up, take me to church. He never, I would try to pay him, he wouldn't take it. He called me big sis, I called him little bro. We sat <laughs> and on the way, we talked all the way to church, talked all the way back then. We sit in front of my door and we talk. We talk about everything. We talk about politics. We talk, Al Sharp to be on the radio. And we talk about what he's talking about. We just had so much good time. That, if there ever was a godly man, Gene Hodges was him. I know, I envision that when he took his breath, the angels were already encamped around his bed. Just wait. They were encamped around his bed and the minute. He closed his eyes and took his last breath. They said, come on, son, let's go. And they took Gene up. People, we don't know from one day to another, <coughs> one hour, sometime minutes, when we're going to leave here, leave this earth. Please have everything in order. You got to. He loved his wife. He loved Charlene. He truly did. He had a good husband, Charlene. But that's all I have to say. I'm going to miss my brother. I'm going to miss my brother. Good afternoon, family and friends. Uh, some say pastor, some say bone, uh, some say sticks. I got all kinds of names that they call me. <laughs> but we went to Northeast Elementary School out on Upper River Road. And there was Jay Willard, there was Nate Daniel, and there was Eugene, the one that I knew. And one day, Daddy drove the school bus. And one day the school bus drove up in the yard, and you can imagine who got off the school bus. <laughs> Eugene, Daddy's grandson, and I was his uncle. <laughs> From that point on, I, we were known as Uncle Cole and Uncle Bone. But I said, I came here to say something, not just that. Our ancestry goes back a long way to a man by the name of Gus Harris, who was a slave. And Gus Harris produced John Harris. John Harris produced Perry Harris, and Perry Harris produced William Harris, and some of the rest of us. And there was a DNA that started with Gus Harris, that work ethic that I heard people talk about a few minutes ago. That DNA had traveled all the way down to us right now. That we know how to survive, we know what to do, we know how to treat people, we love people, 
and that started way back in Gus Harris time in the 1800s. So I say to the younger generation right now, let's, as Jesse Jackson said, keep hope alive. Let's keep family, history, and hope alive. And let us do the thing that will we maintain that DNA, that we know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Larry Lewis. I'm not a Hodge, but he was my brother. And on the time that I did see him, um, he came to South Florida when our mother passed. And he said, I'm, I'm your brother. And I said, well, how many more is it? He said, I can show you, but I can't tell you. I said, okay, I don't, I've got no problem with that. And I met this other wife before I met this, this, this wife. Um, she says, my husband's having a birthday party. And you DJ, can you help us out? I said, we live way in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And y'all live in Atlanta. I said, yeah, we can do it. We can, we can, we can get, we can get up there. He ain't got to know. When we get there, when we get there, he'd be a surprise. Cause he wasn't expecting no brother to show up. But when I did get around it, it was fun. I had plenty of fun. No, it's no sad occasions. Nobody's saying, well, oh, I don't want to be around this one. Let's go home. But I had a joyful time when I was around him. And even he called me when I was out of work. And he told me, say, um, bro, I said, yes. He says, come to Atlanta and I can, give you, I, can, I can get you up. I said, Atlanta, I can't drive. Can't drive the road. I don't know the traffic up there. See, so thank you, but no thank you. I, I stay right here for a lot of you. But I know I can drive. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Giving praise to God. I met Mr. Roy <clears throat> when I was, uh, it was back in 2005, 2004. He's the friend of my friend, Demetrius Crawford. This man right here invited me into his home, made me feel welcome, made me feel a part of anything that he gave. I'm not one for words, but I'm gonna miss this man. I know my friend, he's gonna miss this man. There was nothing that he would not do for anybody. Thank you, Charlene, for inviting me into your house. I'm so sad. My heart is heavy. I know he lived a good life, but my heart is still heavy because I've seen him three weeks before. And like I say, I'm going to miss him, and I'm quite sure that you're going to miss him as well. And that's all I have to say. Good afternoon to we all. Good afternoon. We are here to for the homegoing service. Amen. And my brother, my brother Gene, Amen. that's what he will want. Amen. So I tell all us, let's lift our heads up and move on. Amen. Cause one thing I do know, my brother is peace and rest for now. Amen. You know what? And this is what he doing. Mm -mm -mm. I really want to be somewhere. Lord, somewhere around God's throne, I really want to be somewhere. Lord, somewhere around God's throne, so we can sit at the welcome table, feast on milk and honey, sing and never get tired. Sabah. Well done, well done. I really want to be somewhere, Lord, somewhere around God's throne. I really want to be somewhere, Lord, somewhere around God's throne, so we can sit at the welcome table, feast some milk and honey, sing and never 
never get tired. Say you never get tired. Serve on, serve them, y'all. Serve on. Well done. Well done. Sleep on, my brother. Won't be long. We'll be coming on too. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. We give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and everyone here on this sad occasion. And we're just here to just give a little comfort to the family and to those who are here. But you know, as I reflect on uh, Brother Gene, I'm going to miss him. Because Gene, he was, he was a great guy. And you're going to miss him because you're going to remember his smile. You're going to remember his love mm -hmm. and his laughter. Mm -hmm. And you're going to remember his voice. Gene was a faithful member. He was usher in our church. And he was a true brother in Christ. And after service, we will always have our little side talks. And that's what I'm going to miss. Mm. And he always say, Pastor, I got your back. Mm. I don't know whether or not he was piking or not. <laughs> <laughs> but he always said, <laughs> I got your back. <laughs> he, would just, he would stand at that door. That's right. And sometimes he'd be in the foyer area. Mm -hmm. And after service, say, Brother Gene, did you, did you hear? What was said? He said, Pastor, I heard everything that was said. <laughs> but he have his, he'd be sitting in that four-year chair, his eyes straight at the parking lot. Amen. <laughs> I tell you what, if anybody got hit first, it would have been Gene. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what he said, he what? He had our back. Right. So I'm going to miss him. Oh, yeah. And you know, sometimes we can be talking in the church and, uh, and Gene can talk. Gene can talk in the church. He's trying to talk very low mm -hmm. and quiet. Mm -hmm. But his voice carried. Mm -hmm. And then I just look over there. I just smile within <laughs> and say, that's Gene. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I'm going to miss my brother in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's just turn to Romans, the 14th chapter, the 7th through the 12th verse. We just talked briefly. And we're going to use a title for today is, Where Will You Spend Eternity? Where Will You Spend Eternity? Romans 14, 7 through 12 says, For none of us lives to himself, no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For through this end, Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. So my question is, where will you spend eternity? Death is a reminder that we all must leave this world and everyone dies a physical death. But what is important is how 
you live your life here on earth. Amen. James 4 and 14 says, Whereas you do not know what would happen tomorrow. For what is your life? Life is like a vapor that appears for a little time and then it vanishes away. Where will you spend eternity? In heaven or in hell? God loves you and does not want you to perish or spend eternity in hell. The only way to guarantee that your eternity is in heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. John 3, 16 and 18 says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the only begotten son of God. So if you don't believe that Jesus is the son of God, according to the word, you're condemned already. And your journey will not be eternity in heaven. It will be in hell. First Timothy 2, 4 and 5 says this. Talking about God who desires that all men should be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, one mediator between God and man. And that man is Christ Jesus. Yeah. Heaven is a gift. Amen. You cannot earn it. Come on. Or you don't even deserve it. Mm, right. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Yes. So your salvation is a gift from God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Romans 5 8 and 10 says this, Christ died for us while we were still sinners. That's how much he loved us, you all. That's how much God loved us. This demonstrates God's love for us. Since Christ's blood has been given us, God has been given us God's approval, we are even more and certain that Christ will, get, will save us from God's anger. And if the death of his son restored our relationship with God, while we were still enemies, we are even more certain that because of this restored relationship, the life of his son will save us. Yeah. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says this, For by grace, oh my God, by grace you have been saved through faith and that is not of yourself it is a gift of God well that is shouting when you know that you're by grace you have been saved and there's a gift of God who wouldn't want to have Jesus to come into their lives it's not by works at least anyone shall boast you sh we, we receive God's forgiveness through faith by trusting in Jesus and believing that Jesus is the Son of God. John 1, 12 through 13 says this, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of men, but God. That tell me, church, that if you are not a child of God, a children of God, and God is not your father, Satan is your father. Come on. Amen. Okay. 
A lot of people say, oh, God's my father. Hmm. He is your God and he is your creator, but he is not your father right. until you accept his son, Jesus Christ, Amen. into your life, Amen. into your heart, and live a Christian manner, in a Christian way. The scripture says to encourage you with these words of what happens to believers who are in Christ Jesus. So I'm going to encourage you from 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. And it says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what would happen to believers who have died so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. And that's a, and, and sometimes we go to these funerals, we have individuals even trying to get into the casket, mm -hmm. crying for their dead ones. Mm -hmm. Because that tell me they, they don't have no hope. Come on. Mm -hmm. They don't know Jesus. Right. They don't know where the brother is going. Right. Right. Sometimes I, I be at one funeral, they was acting like that. I said, I hope that guy just <laughs> sit up. <laughs> just sit up. And say, come on, get in here with me. <laughs> <laughs> and it continues to read in the 14th verse for since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again we also believe that when Jesus returned God will bring back with him the believers who have died yes, sir. we tell you this directly from the Lord we who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. Amen. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding, with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangels, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the Christians who are dead will rise up from the grave first. Amen. Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forevermore. And then that last verse says, so encourage each one with these words. Straight from the word of God. Where will you spend eternity? In heaven? Or in hell? If you want to see your family or friends who are believers in Christ, choose heaven, but the choice is yours. If you want to see Brother Gene one day, the choice is yours. Psalms 10, 9, 10, 13 says, I'm sorry, Romans 10, 9, 13 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And in the 13th verse says, For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. 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 You can place your faith in Jesus right now and receive God's free gift of eternal life right now. So, I encourage you, everyone stand. So everyone please stand How, if you can everyone please stand if you can but I encourage you to agree with God's word and express your faith in God by praying the following prayer even believers in Christ I want you all to also pray this prayer Amen. so that you can encourage those who are around you. Amen. Amen. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father 
Thank you for your son Jesus. Thank you for your son Jesus. Who came to earth. Who came to earth. Live a sinless life. Live a sinless life. Die on the cross for my sins. Die on the cross for my sins. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For giving me, for forgiving me, for forgiving me of all of my sins. Of all of my sins. I confess with my mouth, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe in my heart. And I believe in my heart that you have raised him from the dead. That you have raised him from the dead. By faith in your word. By faith in your word. I receive salvation now. I receive salvation now. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. For saving me. For saving me. Now, Lord. Now, Lord. Fill me. Fill me. With your, with your precious, precious Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good afternoon. On behalf of our president and CEO, Mr. Robert Eric West, his sister, Ms. Thelma Denise West, our vice president, and we, the West Mortuary staff, would like to present these beautiful plaques to Mr. Gene White and to his children. The title of the plaque said, Only God Knows Why. God saw you were getting weary, so he did what he knew was best. He came and stood beside you and whispered, come and rest. You bid no one a last farewell, not even a goodbye. And you were gone before we knew it, and only God knows why. So there's nothing to fear, for God has erased your pain. And he's taken you to a better place where there is sunshine and never rain. Amen. The late Mr. Gene Roy Hodges, sunrise, November the 4th, 1954, sunset March the 3rd, 2021. With the family, please lift your hand, the wife and the children. Would you please just show this family some love by giving them a hand clap of praise? Come on to you. Mr. Darren. This is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. As I looked over the bishop, I saw what they said Mr. Gene drove trucks for 40 years. I was just at the store the other night and I was listening to some truck drivers that were saying that they have to sometimes run all different routes because their truck be overloaded. Yeah. But you know, you don't always have to overload a truck. You can overload your body. Come on. Yeah. You hear a lot of people say, I got to lose some of this weight. I got to cut back on eating. Yeah. But it's a lot of more things can weigh you down too. Come on. Amen. Some heartache, some pain and some stuff. So I believe that's on the other day. Mr. Gene pulled up on the weight scale. Mm. Then the man said, you can't go around, you can't go on. You got to come through him. Mm. You find out he has some suffering, some good days and some bad days. But the man said, if you can get rid of all of that and come on through on this side, you can get some love, some peace, 
and some happiness. On the other day, he just unloaded his truck with all the long, hard days of suffering and reloaded on the other side. You heard how his pastor say that how he would come to church and help other folks, being a cheerful giver. So on today, if we gonna weep and cry for anyone, let us not cry for Brother Hard. Come on. Cause he done unloaded his truck. And he ready to go on home. Where God has promised there's sunshine and no rain. No more suffering, no more crying. So today on behalf of Mr. Gene Roy Hart, this family would like to take the opportunity to thank Pastor Lawrence, all these members of his church from Atlanta, all these ministers, uncle, our chaplain, Pastor Munson, any other ministers and ladies other guys for all the acts of kindness you have shown them during that dark hour of sorrow and bereavement. Brother, you travel from near and far, your food, your flowers, your prayers, but most of all, you're present here today to help them sustain the loss of their loved ones. On behalf of our president, Mr. Robert Eric West, our vice president, Mr. Devin Neese West, our chaplain, Pastor George Frank Munch Jr., and we, the West March Raven staff, would like to thank this Hodge family for entrusting your loved one with us. And I always remember, continue to look to the hill with cometh thy help, for all of our help do come from the Lord. Amen. Now, in accordance with the family's wishes, we will do the committal service right here for Mr. Hodge, and then our staff will reload him and carry him to his final resting place on the other side of the city. Pass the Lord. John 5, 28 and 29 says, Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and to those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Father God, we are here to commit Gene Hodges' body back to the earth earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Jesus said in John 11, 25 through 26, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he was dead, he shall live again. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The Bible promised that one day there will be no more death, and we who are in Christ long for that day. Until that day comes, we will live in anticipation of the time when we shall lay aside the cares of this life to take up the joy of eternal life with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father God, you are the source of our life. The very breath that flows out of our bodies comes from you and will return to you at the end of our journey. Thank you for the comfort and strength we receive in your presence. Let our hearts be open to your words and our lives be lived in your service according to your words until that day when we step from this life into the life to come. Comfort our hearts through your words. Strengthen us now with your presence and may your grace and peace be ours both now and forever in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. At this time this will conclude the service for our brother but we want the family to know on behalf of West Marchuary, uh brother Eric and then brother uh, Denise West and myself as the chaplain and in the days and the weeks to come when your burden are heavy and you need someone to talk to we won't only just talk with you pray with you and pray for you we will pray with you and for you so after the day we still are here for you so we thank God for your family for this family and thank God for all of you who came out to support this family on this day God bless you all once again, this family would like to thank all these great men and women of God and each of you that traveled to many parts to help sustain the last day alone. We were asked that some of the young gentlemen that would be kind enough to help us to replay Mr. Hodge back into the earth that we can carry him to his final rest. 